Hi all you cool cats and kittens, it's Brad again from Hardcore Zen. And today I thought I'd present you something a little quirky. So here goes. My friend Steve sent me this. Oh, you can't see it on the screen. There we go. Urgent call for one million meditators to liberate and reclaim our world on April 4th at precisely 1045 uh, p.m. EST when a celestial stargate opens. And I guess this was getting a lot of traction because even my uh, my girlfriend's sister was talking about it. Let's see. It says, on April 4th, 2020, a tremendous astrological portal will open as uh, through which humanity must unite as one mind, one consciousness, and by doing so, take great strides in reclaiming our independence from the financial debt slave system instituted 700 years ago, dissolve the old world structures, ease the coronavirus, and f and the fear surrounding it and end the 5G network and its deadly radiation and in parentheses likely a major factor in what happened in Wuhan China with reports now surfacing that we use that blah 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 um, the power that we have at our disposal on April 4th is truly astronomical in the most literal sense when the planets of Jupiter and Pluto come together in the sky that day and so forth and so on calling for mass participation in this meditation that will fix the world and end coronavirus and do all this other great stuff. I thought that was funny. Actually, yesterday, I, which was April 4th, I was planning to join it. We'd, we'd already done an all-day Zazen that day, which was yesterday, but I thought I'll, I'll just sit for 20 minutes during that time, and I was prepared to do it. But I got the time wrong. I thought it was 8.45 here, but it was actually 7.45 here in California, and I missed it. So I didn't, I didn't participate in the worldwide meditation. So if it failed, it's my fault. But I, I thought that was kind of interesting. It reminded me of two things. One was World Contact Day. And if you've ever heard the song Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft, either the uh, version by the Carpenters, which gets played on the radio a lot, uh, or the original version by Clatu, which is a Canadian band, uh, which I actually think is better, but the, the Carpenters version is really good too. Anyway, it refers to something that happened, I believe, in 1960 or 61, thereabouts, where a bunch of people planned to get together and meditate and uh, draw aliens to come to earth through their combined meditation it was called world contact day and who knows did it work i don't know but anyway that was uh, that was sort of a similar idea that you could meditate and make some you know thing happen and uh, which reminded me of the other thing which was somebody at a lecture that nishijima roshi gave years ago asked him if he thought that the meditation we were doing there in our little room in, in the Tokyo University was going to kind of help the wider world. And I think referred to the people out outside, you know, the, the, the busy people on the streets of, of Tokyo. And Nishijima Roshi said something like, well, it might help a little. <laughs> you know, this is the typical answer of him. So, uh, yeah, I think I think those kind of things can help a little, but this idea that it'll have a kind of a magical effect on the world is, you know, I, I don't know if a million people meditating on the c conflagration between Jupiter and Pluto is going to, uh, you know, end coronavirus. I kind of doubt that. But, uh, you know, it, it does help a little. Your meditation helps the world in the, the way that I, I always reference this same saying by my friend Rob, who said, I vow to save all beings from myself. The first bodhisattva vow is I vow to save all beings. Well, he just added from myself to the end of it, which I think is the way that meditation helps the world. This is the most concrete way. You know, whether or not there's some kind of a magical connection between people, I, I believe there is a connection between people, and it's not magical at all. And your zazen does affect other people in ways that are so subtle you wouldn't even be able to measure it or notice it, but it does have some kind of effect. But if I'm talking to people who are more skeptical of that sort of thing, I would say, well, the more concrete effect is by you becoming calmer and more even-tempered, you can help other people do the same. 
and especially in this time of the coronavirus and all this other stuff, if your friends and neighbors and people like that are freaking out, you can be the person who acts as a sort of a gyroscope in the room. You know, the gyroscope in a ship helps keep the ship stable, even though it's a little tiny thing. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know that, but it's, it's a science. But anyway, you can kind of help uh, increase the stability of the entire thing by just being that one person who remains stable in the situation. But of course, you have to kind of watch this. And it came up during the Q&A session of yesterday's Zazen at Angel City Zen Center. We're doing it on Zoom now. Uh, that uh, that you, can, you can do that, but you can easily get burnt out with that. And if you get burnt out with that, you're no help to anybody. And I related it to something that's come up since we've had this Angel City Zen Center, which people are always saying, well, Brad, you should have for office hours and you should be available from, you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day to talk to whoever wants to come and talk to you about their problems. And and this has been suggested numerous times by people uh, associated with the center and they're well-meaning, but uh, it would it, it's not going to work. <laughs> You know, I, I'm sure that after uh, half a day of that, I would just be so frazzled, I couldn't do it anymore. And, and I know this because I, I know what it's like to do dokusans during retreats and, and so forth. And it's a sort of a similar situation. I can handle it for a certain amount of time. And then after a while, the gyroscope itself starts to get wonky and I can't be any use to anybody. So, but you can be a use to other people by remaining stable and calm yourself and a meditation practice can help that. Which brings me to the other thing I wanted to mention in this video is when I was looking for the link, because I lost track of the link that Steve sent me to that uh, meditation thing that I talked about right at the beginning of the video, I, I, I'm just trying keywords in Google to try to find it again, and I didn't realize how many you know, meditate for COVID-19 stuff. There's, there, there must have been page after page on, on Google, at least two pages I found, of just different things saying, you know, mindfulness will help you get through COVID-19 and, you know, and all this other stuff. And yeah, I, and I've been kind of saying this on these videos all along, the ways I think that a Zazen practice can help. And you can kind of go back and look at any of my videos that I've done the past two or three weeks. I think almost every one of them has touched on that subject in some way. So I do think it can help. But, but you know, I, I, a lot of this is opportunism. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say that people who are teaching meditation are seeing, a, you know, an opportunity here to, you know, put their thing into motion and, and they're offering this stuff and they're, you know, increasing their popularity and their and their revenue streams and everything else by doing so. And, you know, I, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't know how much it's really helping. Uh, the but meditation can help. But the thing is about meditation helping you through a crisis like this is I think people kind of mistake it for a magic pill. So they imagine they'll take the magic meditation pill for 20 minutes and that'll fix their anxiety over, over the COVID-19 situation and, and whatever else it is. It doesn't work that way. Uh, if you want to reap the benefits of, of whatever this has to offer for the current situation and pandemic and all that, uh, you'll have to do it consistently. You'll have to do it every day. And you'll have to do it on days when you don't feel like doing it. And you'll have to do it at, at times when you're going to feel like, oh my God, this isn't helping at all. You know, you, you, you have to kind of get through that. And the times when it doesn't feel like it's helping at all are probably the times that it's helping the most. You know, it's the times when you are sitting with all sorts of anxiety and fear and everything welling up in your head and your heart's racing possibly and your adrenaline's pumping and all that, but you sit with it. You sit with it and you stay still while it happens rather than trying to run away or do something or read the news or anything else that you might try to do to escape or watch Netflix or whatever. And instead of doing that, you sit with it, sit directly with it and, and just allow it. So those, those terrible meditation sessions that you will be guaranteed to have if you're trying to use meditation to cope with anxiety, those are the best ones. And the meditation sessions that feel all cool and calm and clear, 
you know, those are pleasant, but those might not be helping you nearly as much as the times when you are sitting there freaking out while you're meditating. So there you go. I think that's well, those are the things I wanted to say for today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, my PayPal and Patreon links are below, and that's the way I make my living, and that's how I, you know, make this all possible. And I really, really thank all of you who are sticking with it and still contributing, because that's great. Uh, I feel very lucky for that. And to those of you who feel like you just are, uh, the financial situation is too daunting and you want to stop contributing, that's okay. I, I'm pretty sure other people will still keep contributing and we'll all, we'll all get through this. So great. Thank you and really appreciate all of you. And see you next time. Bye, all you cool cats and kittens.